RAID Extended Examples of Usage Today we'll be talking about an important part of the building process of the HCI system, storage configuration, and in particular, RAID technology. What is RAID? RAID technology is used to increase the performance and reliability of data storage. The abbreviation stands for either Redundant Array of Independent Drives or Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks, which is older and less common. A RAID system consists of two or more drives working in parallel. These can be hard disks, but there's a growing trend to also use the SSD technology. There are different RAID levels, each optimized for a specific situation. These are not standardized by an industry group or standardization committee, which explains why some companies sometimes come up with their own unique numbers and implementations. Types of RAID Storage administrators can deploy RAID as a hardware, a controller card or chip, or software, software only or hybrid. Hardware RAID Let's start with hardware RAID. A dedicated hardware controller provides hardware-based RAID services. IT can deploy hardware RAID in two ways, an external RAID controller card or internal RAID on chip. The RAID controller card. This plug-in expansion card connects to a PCIe or PCIX motherboard slot. The card contains a RAID processor and I.O. processors with drive interfaces. The cards are expensive, but since they're independent of the host, all RAID operations are offloaded from the CPU to the dedicated card. RAID on chip. A single chip on the motherboard integrates the host interface, I.O. interfaces for HDDs, the RAID processor, and a memory controller. Software RAID Software-based RAID delivers RAID services from the host. Software RAID comes in two flavors, purely software-defined running from the OS and hybrid software that contains a hardware component to relieve the load on the CPU. Software only. Software RAID is the least expensive of the RAID types and is often included as a native function on the OS. It's a host-based software application that manages RAID calculations for attached hard disk drives. It's attached via an HBA or native I.O. interface and activates when the OS loads the RAID driver. Hybrid. This software-based RAID uses a hardware component to deliver RAID BIOS functions from RAID BIOS on the motherboard or on an HBA. This technology offers a layer of redundant protection from a faulty boot process. RAID Levels and Use Cases RAID 0 Striping In a RAID 0 system, data is split up into blocks that get written across all the drives in the array. By using multiple disks, starting with two, at the same time, this offers superior I.O. performance. The Advantages of RAID 0 RAID 0 offers great performance, both in read and write operations. There is no overhead caused by parity controls. All storage capacity is used. There is no overhead. And the technology is easy to implement. The Disadvantages of RAID 0 RAID 0 is not about redundancy. Sometimes you might hear that it's not a RAID at all. That's why it's usually called simple RAID or striped disk. If one drive fails, all data in the RAID 0 array is lost. It should not be used for data that requires any form of redundancy. RAID 0 is ideal for data that does not require redundancy but needs high read-write performance, such as image retouching or a video editing station, a developer's environment, etc. RAID 1 – Mirroring In RAID 1, data is stored twice by writing it to both the data drive and a mirror drive. If a drive fails, the controller uses either the data drive or the mirror drive for data recovery and continuous operation. You need at least two drives for a RAID 1 array. The Advantages of RAID 1 
RAID 1 offers excellent read speed and a write speed that is comparable to that of a single drive. In case a drive fails, data does not have to be rebuilt. It just has to be copied to the replaced drive. And RAID 1 is a very simple technology. The disadvantages of RAID 1. The main disadvantage is that the effective storage capacity is only half of the total drive capacity because all data gets mirrored between two drives. Software RAID 1 solutions do not always allow a hot swap of a failed drive. That means the failed drive can only be replaced after powering down the computer it's attached to. For servers that are used simultaneously by many people, this may not be acceptable. Such systems typically use hardware controllers that do support hot swapping. RAID 1 is ideal for mission-critical storage, for instance, in accounting systems. It's also suitable for small servers in which only two data drives will be used. RAID 5 – Striping with Parity RAID 5 is the most common secure RAID level, and it requires at least three drives. Data blocks are striped across the drives, and on one drive, a parity checksum of all the block data is written. However, the parity data is not written to a fixed drive. It's spread across all drives. Using the parity data, the controller can recalculate the data of one of the other data blocks should that data no longer be available. That means a RAID 5 array can withstand a single drive failure without losing data or losing access to it. Although RAID 5 can be achieved in a software-only scenario, a hardware controller is still recommended to offload the parity calculations from the CPU to a dedicated chip and avoid a possible write hole by using the RAID battery. Often, extra cache memory is used on these controllers to improve write performance. The advantages of RAID 5. Read data transactions are very fast, while write data transactions are somewhat slower due to the parity that has to be calculated and equals to the performance of a single drive in an array. If a drive fails, you still have access to all data, even while the failed drive is being replaced and the storage controller rebuilds the data on the new drive. Disadvantages of RAID 5 When a drive fails, the rebuild process will affect all the drives in the parity array. This might cause a second drive failure due to additional workload. This is complex technology. If one of the disks in an array using 4 terabyte disks fails and is replaced, the rebuild time restoring the data may take a day or longer, depending on the load on the array and the speed of the controller. If another disk goes bad during that time, data will be lost forever. RAID 5 is a good choice for SSD-based arrays, but should not be used or even considered on HDD-based systems as primary storage. Providing minimum redundancy overhead, it becomes the most popular choice for file servers and backup repositories. RAID 6 – Striping with Dual Parity RAID 6 is similar to RAID 5, but the parity data is written to two drives. That means it requires at least four drives and can withstand two drives dying simultaneously. RAID 6, unlike RAID 5, allows withstanding any two drive failures in the array without losing any data. Advantages of RAID 6 Like with RAID 5, read data transactions are very fast. RAID 6 allows withstanding a failure of any two drives in the array. Disadvantages of RAID 6 Depending on the configuration, RAID 6 write speed may be the same as in RAID 5 or slower. Because it uses the same technology as RAID 5, RAID 6 inherited the limitations of RAID 5. RAID 6 delivers improved redundancy, but at the sake of slower writes. It's preferable over RAID 5 due to improved redundancy. RAID 10 – Mirroring and Striping It's possible to combine the advantages and disadvantages of RAID 0 and RAID 1 in one single system. This is a nested or hybrid RAID configuration. 
Logically, it creates virtual volumes or spans that are mirroring disks and then combines mirrored volumes into Stripe. Advantages of RAID 10 If something goes wrong with one of the disks in a RAID 10 configuration, the rebuild time is very fast since all that is needed is to copy all the data from the surviving mirror to a new drive. Disadvantages of RAID 10 Half of the storage capacity goes to mirroring, so compared to large RAID 5 or RAID 6 arrays, this is an expensive way to have redundancy. Usually, in the IT world, it's a common challenge to choose between storage efficiency, redundancy, and performance. If you want both storage efficiency and performance, you need RAID 0. But if you need redundancy and performance, then RAID 10 is the best choice for you. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Tune in next time to learn about erasure coding.